Welcome back friends. Very chilly day on the homestead. A real hard frost this morning. We're just finishing up uh, the last of the firewood for the year and I want to address the question that has come in. Uh, uh, there's quite a controversy swirling around and the question is will modern day chainsaw chaps, will they stop an electric chainsaw? I did a little digging around and I couldn't find a lot of information on that and I've received hundreds of comments. I don't know, everyone seems to have a definitive answer. They're like, oh, you gotta be careful with those electric chainsaws. They won't, they'll just burn right through a pair of normal chainsaw chaps. I don't know if I believe that or not. So let's find out for ourselves. I ordered a brand new pair off of Amazon. Um, I'll get the electric chainsaw set up and we'll find out indeed, will that happen? It's important to me because my family uses electric chainsaws uh, more than I do. So uh, let's get it all set up, grab a log. It's just shocking to me how uh, cheap the uh, chainsaw chaps have gotten when those things first came out. Man, they were expensive. I think I ordered these here. They may not be the best ones, right? But uh, I think they're like 40 bucks, which is pretty hard to beat. <laughs> I remember my first pair I bought, I showed up, uh, and my granddad came over and we were uh, harvesting a cedar tree that Henry gave us and I, I put those chainsaw chaps on. I actually had two pair and I offered him a pair and he said, oh no, <laughs> those, those will sweat you too much, he said, meaning that they're just too hot. And yeah, he's right, they are, they are hot. You have to kind of counter, or you have to kind of weigh the balance sometimes, right? Do I want to suffer heat stroke or do I want to have a, you know, protect my legs? So, uh, yeah, these aren't, uh, these aren't super nice. <laughs> to be, they feel pretty thin. They do have a pocket, which is really handy. Here's one trick for you guys uh, when you get these things. These, the st still did this right here. These are the most, in, this is the most annoying uh, deal when they do, a, they do like a bar tack right there. Uh, to, and the idea is to keep things from coming out, but you can never get your hand in there. So here's what you do. I don't care what you paid for them. You'll, you'll thank me. It's so much nicer. You get your knife and you just cut that you cut that stitching in there open that thing up right there and that'll change your that'll change your life i don't i can't tell you how many years it took me to figure that out before i fought that stupid pocket on my chaps now you got a pocket that you can use <laughs> so we'll let the uh, let this old fur log here simulate a I was going to put a ratchet strap on there i don't know if i'll need that or not i don't know i may have grabbed a log that's too big I don't know about you guys, I don't have thighs that big. Neither does anyone else, apparently. <laughs> That's all right. I kind of wanted to ratchet strap it down anyway, so let's do that, and that will hold it. Definitely hold it tight. We've got a pole cat on the loose. This cat tangled with it the other night, and then came in the house. We, Mrs. W and I, we like to sleep with the windows open. And man, the, sm <laughs> the smell came in and about asphyxiated us. And close a window and couldn't hardly sleep all night. So uh, Jack, uh, he went after it. Br uh, Brian thought he saw it go underneath the pottery barn. And so uh, Jack got set up with the 22 and uh, stalked it for an hour, but it didn't show itself. And I could smell it this morning. It's still running around here somewhere. It's only a matter of time before the, the dogs get into it. And that nonsense about tomato juice, that doesn't work. There are so many things like that that get repeated. These home remedies. Oh, if your dog gets into skunk, all you need to do is just wash him in tomato juice. How many people have done that? And uh, just to find out, you make a huge mess. <laughs> you go to a, a great expense. Who has that much tomato juice? Uh, just to find out it doesn't work at all. I'll bet the guys, uh, we're all guilty of that. And how many things do we repeat day after day and time after time that we heard from our granddad or from our dad or something that they heard from someone that uh, they've never tried and it just has nothing to do with reality? I'd say about the most, the most of it. I think we're ready here, guys. So if you don't know how chain, these chainsaw chaps work, is uh, if you tear into them, they've got long strings, it's some sort of a tough Kevlar thread that run to the length of it. 
and you wear them on the front. And, then, and if you go online, you can look and see that there's a, um, a national study that shows where most chainsaw accidents are. And they're typically on the left side of the body for right-handed guys for kicking back, especially on the left thigh. You cut that femoral artery, you, you can, nothing worse than a chainsaw, a chainsaw wound. Uh, so what, what the design is, is that it, as if you happen to drop that on there, that those teeth, as they're cutting through there, they pick up all of those threads and those threads immediately just wad up around the drive sprocket and just gum it up to the point where it won't go anymore. Similar to the saw stop concept on, on table saws, right? Just, it completely disables the blade. Now, what I keep hearing from you guys and warning me, and I don't know if I'm hearing it from guys that actually know, or you're just parroting what you've heard somewhere, is that the impulse or the strength of the, of the wireless, mo the brushless motors um, are so powerful that they just tear right through this stuff and they no longer offer, offer protection. You know, that's what, I, I don't know. That's why I went with, well, I went with the cheap ones for a couple reasons. I don't want to tear up a hundred dollar set of chainsaw chaps. I've done that before and felt bad about it. Um, and, you know, if you were going to just go buy the cheapest one on Amazon, are you protected? So, uh, this is the saw we'll use. It's just basically the, the one you guys have seen me use forever, the DeWalt with the 16 inch bar. What I'll do is we'll run it full throttle, throttle. <laughs> full switch uh, on here and then uh, dr dr drop it on kind of under its own weight. I'm not going to like try to get in there. We'll pull it off and see if there was any damage underneath it. All right, let's do this. We'll spool it up and we'll just drop it straight on there and see if it gums it up. Okay, so just out, just to show you really quick, clicky, quickly here, if I try to engage the motor, it did burn through that. That's interesting. So if I were to go, fall and get stuck on the trigger, yeah, that is, that is interesting. Uh, because in a gas, we've done this on gas saws, and once that, once these fibers were wrapped up into the drive sprocket, it was it, the engine was killed. It, it was done completely. But there you can see that uh, even though it was laboring, I was still able. And here's the issue: why I say that is that typically when we fall, and this happens with with firearms as well, when we fall, we clinch and we clinch and we squeeze up and we, we kind of come in and grab things. So what can happen is that if you f were to fall on this thing you could easily clinch and keep this thing on and this thing as you just saw it might still be burning through that um, through the chainsaw chaps and guys will say well that would never happen to me but you don't know you know when you get in things happen really quickly i can't tell you guys the strange things that happen i worked with a guy that uh, told me he was working with his buddy who had a great big one of those industrial black and decker grinders you know the big like the big eight inch ones and he was wearing like a i don't know if it's a coat or a hoodie or something but somehow that thing got strung around that that wheel and, and uh, he, it pulled him in, and it was it was crushed. It was crushing him. He couldn't get his finger off the trigger, and his buddy had to run over there and kick the cord out of the wall. And it, he couldn't breathe. You know, who knows what happened? I mean, it, you would you can't even make that stuff up. Just weird things happen with uh, pop, these electric motors. They're so powerful. Bear in mind, guys, that these these chainsaw chaps are not high dollar items. Uh, you can there you can see the. The strings, uh, they're actually quite thin. If we fl Now, I went after that twice, you know, once here and once there, you know, an inch or so apart. And you can see on the back side, really is uh, no damage that I can see right there. It may have given you a, a, a scratch or something here on the, you can see that it did come through on the back side, but that was, you know, really getting after it. You'd have to, you'd have to really want to cut your leg off to get to that point. But I, the interesting thing, and the concerning thing about this for me is the fact that it had the power uh, to burn through that a second time after it wadded up around the drive sprocket. Now it's not doing it now. If we were to, let's pull this cover off and we can see. How about we pull that battery off there to keep safety Sally happy. If we pull this cover off, we'll see what we see. Kind of what we expected. It just wadded up around that drive sprocket and shut it down. All right, guys, so what did we learn here? Well, I, I'd say, you know, if I had to go out on a limb, I'd say you're probably, you're probably okay. Now, with that being said, however, comma, 
I wouldn't buy the cheapest chainsaw chaps on Amazon. Um, I mean, if it, if it comes down to that, if you don't have any choice that's better than nothing, I would stick with a, a better quality, an Oregon brand, steel, Husqvarna, uh, something that um, that so, something from a reputable company versus uh, made from dubious Ch Chinese uh, uh, ingredients. However, uh, it did stop it. That I can see the the concern. I think I understand now what guys are are saying is that that can that motor electric motor might be able to burn through and that initial hit uh, didn't necessarily put the saw out of commission and that is absolutely true would the outcome have been different had we dropped these on a pair of pro steel pants are there enough fibers in those uh, that would have wadded it up the first time that i don't know um, but I, the best thing is not to drop a chainsaw on your leg at all <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me. So that's kind of interesting. I guess what 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 I'm going to take from this is, um, you know, when I'm talking to Jack or, or Mrs. W, is just make sure that we really reiterate, the, you know, the importance of of good ha of safety techniques when you're working with your saw. You know, the main thing. It's not usually when you're doing the big work and and cutting down big trees is with the big saws is when you get hurt. It's the stuff that's just the simple stuff where you're like, oh, I'm just going to start this saw for a minute. And I'm going to trim this branch. What I have found, and I have dropped, uh, I have dropped a bar on my chainsaw chaps one time, and it was when I was clearing brush. You know, you're moving around and you're and you're cutting and you're moving and you got this scream, screaming chainsaw bar flying around there. What you want to get the habit of doing is move, establish a safe position that's really stable, cut, engage the brake, move, disengage the brake, and, and go be very methodical about it. This is not worth having an accident for, and what, what do you save time-wise? Most of those guys that do that are just showing off anyway, so uh, that's it. Um, science for you guys. Uh, congratulations to all the new members in the Wrangler Star channel. Um, everyone really enjoyed the buildup of that Mark 18 video. YouTube struck it. It's gone now. So I hope you got to see it. Um, for members, if you'd like to be a member, I invite you to subscribe and support the channel with continued demonetization. Again, as I said, we're going to rely upon you guys to keep the channel going. And, um, and that will be better in the long run anyway. It'd be nice to, to be independent from them. I uploaded for you members um, Jack's first wrestling match last night uh, at 132 pound class. So if you want to watch that, uh, if you join up, sign up for the membership, uh, that you'll have access to that. Uh, so I'm going to be putting more more stuff up there for you guys, um, behind the scenes stuff and and what I can. So thanks for watching. Keep us in your prayers. <laughs> God bless you and your families, and we'll see you guys on the next video.